Hi everybody. Um, so for our first chapter Friday today, I am reading from a book called I Am Princess X. It's by Shirley Priest, or Cheryl Priest, I think is how you say her name. If you haven't figured it out, I'm not that great at pronunciations, but that's okay. Um, there's also, this, is, this book is cool because it's part comic and part chapter book. But it's a really, really awesome book. I recommended it to my niece when she was in middle school, and she absolutely loved it. And it didn't take me that long to read, so it's really a good book. Fast read and pretty awesome. Libby Deaton and May Harper invented Princess X in fifth grade when Libby's leg was in a cast, and May had a doctor's note saying she couldn't run around the track anymore because her asthma would totally kill her. Their PE teacher sent them into exile on the little kid's playground where the kindergarten teacher sat in the shade reading a romance novel with a, with a mostly naked man on the cover. A crowd of nervous six-year-olds watched the newcomers from behind the swing set, big-eyed, silent, and ready to bolt. For all, the little kids, for all the little kids knew, fifth graders were capable of anything. But Libby and May just sat off to the side against the brick wall, their legs stretched out across the asphalt. They had nothing to do, nowhere to go, no one to talk to with each other, and it wasn't like they were friends or anything. Libby had changed schools after her parents bought a new house, and May had just moved to Seattle from Atlanta. They barely knew each other's names. Still, there was solidarity and boredom and sidewalk chalk lay all over the four square court that no one was using right at that minute. May had kicked a piece that some tiny Picasso had ditched and then crushed it with her heel of her shoe. The cement turned a satisfying cherry red, like the, pav like the pavement was bleeding. She leaned her leg toward a blue piece, ready to smash it into dust as well. But Libby scooted forward, leveraging herself along with that, he with that cast heavy leg. Hang on, she said, this might be cool. She gathered the remaining candy colored chunks, lining up the pieces according to color until she had a rainbow, more or less. When she was satisfied, she called over to the little kids. Hey, do you guys wanna watch me draw? The kindergartners exchanged weary glances. Come on, Libby pressed. I'll draw anything you want. I'm kind of good at it. Curious, May leaned forward. May couldn't draw for squat, but she liked watching other people be good at things. Slowly, the kindergartners emerged from their hiding places. One particularly bold child shouted, Draw a dog! Libby obliged, producing a green dog with a yellow collar and big blue eyes. The kindergarten girl adjusted her glasses and stood up on tiptoes, squinting to see all the way over the drawing. She nodded and looked at her classmates. It's a good dog, she declared. <clears throat> and in five seconds flat, a mob of demanding munchkins descended on Libby and May, each one yelling a request. Draw a cat, a boat, a horse, do a haunted house, urged a curly-haired kid with untied shoelaces. Libby grinned. A haunted house? I like that one. Yeah. May, give, him, give me some purple, would you? May paused, not because she objected to purple, but because she was a little surprised. It was the first time anyone except her teacher had said her name at school. Finally, she replied, yeah, sure. Even though it was hard to say sure without her G Georgia accent coming through. She handed over the chalk and watched as Libby spent the next few minutes drawing something right out of a scary movie, except it was sort of cute instead of frightening. The house's shape was cartoony, and behind the broken windows, all the ghosts were smiling. A boy in a Mariner's baseball shirt stomped up to the, to the finished drawing and assessed it with a critical eye. Now you have to draw a princess who lives here. A princess who lives in the haunted house? Got it. Libby reached for the yellow, pink, and red nubs of chalk. Soon, a figure took shape. A blue-haired girl in a puff-sleeved princess dress wearing a big gold crown and red sneakers. May was transfixed. She'd never seen anyone draw anything half so good, at least not since that time at Six Flags when the guy at a booth drew her picture for ten bucks. When Libby was finished, the little boy in the baseball shirt said the princess was awesome, and everyone agreed, especially May. But then the boy said, wait, it's not done. You forgot her wand. Give her a magic wand. May 
shook her head. Nah, Libby, she said, forgetting her accent for once. Don't give her a wand. Anyone can be awesome with magic. You should give her something cool instead. Something cool? Okay, like what? Ooh, she exclaimed, give her a sword. A sword? Yeah, Libby took the purple chalk and swept it along the concrete. A sword takes skill. When she was done, she put the chalk down and wiped her hands on her pants. How about that? The sword looks kind of weird, May said. She had forgotten about the kindergartners, too. It's a katana sword, like the ninjas use. They're basically the best swords ever. Oh, yeah, right, May said, pretending she knew all about ninjas. You can really mess somebody up with one of those. Now, we just have to give her a name. Libby looked up. May, you got any ideas? May pondered the question. She needed a good answer. She might have a new friend in the works, and she didn't want to blow it. If she's got a sword, she's probably on a mission, she said. Maybe she's a spy or a soldier, or like you said, she could be a ninja. She could, she could have a code name. It couldn't be too complicated. It should be easy, so remember, and quick off the tongue, we could call her Princess X. Why X? Libby asked. Because X is the most mysterious letter, May told her, and things with X's in them are pretty cool. She hoped she was right, and it was cool enough. Libby considered this and nodded. Okay, that works for me. May exhaled and smiled. I'm glad you like it. I do like it, Libby replied, and she added the final touches, the glimmer on the princess's crown, the logo on her chucks. It'll work just fine. So here she is. I give you princess x so the story is um it gets pretty dramatic from there um one of the girls and it's been a while since i've read it but one of the girls ends up the, the girls form this awesome friendship and um one day one of the girls ends up dying in a horrific car accident um and they never really find the girl's body and so the other girl a few years later is walking down the street and she sees Princess X and after her friend had died she had destroyed all the Princess X things that they had made and so she sees Princess X on this pool walking down the street one day and um, so then she's on a mission to kind of solve who's behind that Princess X drawing is it her friend is it somebody else? So it is a very dramatic book and it's really great. There's a lot of comics mixed in with it because they, they put the Princess X comics in, but it's an awesome, awesome book. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Come to the library and check it out.